Hi guys, Ian Johnson from driversuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about identifying the decision makers in a business to business marketplace and why that is so important. So what we're going to do today is we're, I'm basically just going to go over three of the typical type of decision makers that your company might be dealing with in a business to business marketplace and why it's important to basically identify them and create um, a set of criteria by which your salespeople should uh, understand those decision makers in terms of how they go about making decisions. Okay, And the reason why identifying your decision makers are so important in your industry is because you know, you want, not only do you want your salespeople to understand how they should approach and how they should talk to these decision makers and how they should push them towards making a decision or basically help them and guide them towards making a decision, but you also want to make sure that your marketing team knows how to deliver clear and concise messages to these customers. Okay. Um, so marketing and sales, you know, a successful salesperson is a different person to different people. And a marketing message is, is, is successful when it appeals uh, to different individuals in different positions, okay? Especially in a business-to-business -business marketplace. So, you know, let's just go over, you know, three example decision makers that your company might come across. We'll start off with number one. We'll start off with the business owner. Okay. Now, you're not always going to deal with a business owner, but if you do, okay, you're going to be dealing with an individual who's got a big picture point of view. All right? This is an individual that is concerned with uh, perhaps their market position. Okay? You know, he's going to, he or she is going to be concerned with how their business is performing in their market. How are they perceived in terms of uh, the market position, are they known as a market leader, market challenger, market follower? So market position is a concern for them. Uh, you know, they may be concerned with, uh, they're pro definitely going to be concerned with the, their bottom line, okay? So what are you selling to them in terms of a product or service that can help them improve their bottom line, okay? Um, they're going to be concerned with, very likely, inventory costs, okay? Um, and the reason why I write that is because every single you know, business owner is concerned with the cost of finance inventory. Financing, there you go. Cost of financing, all right? And, you know, a lot of, a lot of you may be looking at this list and saying, you know, well, we don't sell any kind of products that can reduce the cost of financing. Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> because, you know, a company that finances its inventory is always looking for ways to reduce its cost to finance its inventory. And you can do that with consignment inventory agreements. You can do that with large blanket order agreements. So when you look at a business owner, you know, they're concerned with the big picture. Their concerns pertain to the cost of their business, their bottom line, their cost of goods sold, okay? You know, their own customers. They're concerned with issues that pertain to their business. Cost of financing, cost of financing receivables, cost of financing inventory, cost of capital, these type of things are concerns for them. And you can basically structure your marketing message or your sales pitch around how you can help them with big picture items. We can help you reduce your inventory costs, not just by offering you the lowest price, but by using consignment inventory agreements, blanket orders, what have you. Okay? So that's the first one is the business owner. The second one we're going to talk about, and I'll try and give myself some space here, is we're going to talk about the engineer, okay, or the field service technician. the installer, project manager, project manager, all right? So what you got in these cases, these are, these are the, basically the technical individuals, okay? So these are, this is the business owner, and you got the technical individuals here. Now, their concerns aren't really going to be related to big picture items. They're going to be concerned with the project they're managing, okay? They're going to be concerned with the product that they manage or the, the product that they're designing. So they're going to be concerned with project costs, okay? Right off the bat, you know, am I going to come under budget with this project cost, product costs, okay? Um, perhaps they're concerned with timeline, you know, the budget, the budget of the program that they're running, okay? So in this case, when it comes to engineers, they're, they're concerned with project costs, product costs, design costs, uh, design, okay? They're concerned with quality, and then maybe cost per use. Sorry. 
cost per use. So these are all issues that pertain to engineering concerns. Okay? Am I buying a good product? Does it have strong cost per use? Is it going to help me reduce the cost on this project? Am I going to come in um, on time on the project? Is the budget going to be maintained? So can, do you sell products that basically help in this area? Maybe you probably do, okay? And the third area we're going to talk about, or the third decision maker, sorry, is the procurement professional, okay? Now, right off the bat, everyone's going to say, oh, I know exactly how to market to a procurement professional. Um, they're concerned with price. Yes, that's true. They are concerned with price. Price is a, is a major concern with them. But the other concern they have is the cost of inventory, okay? Inventory costs. Okay, and that includes um, per unit freight costs on incoming parts. Per unit freight costs. Okay, they're also concerned with financing. They're also concerned with damage. They're also concerned with obsolescence. Okay, so do you have products that are well manufactured, that don't damage easily, that aren't going to become obsolete? Do you have a way of lowering your per unit freight costs on incoming parts for your customer? Do you have a way of lowering price, maybe not necessarily lowering price per se, but perhaps giving them a higher, uh, a lower price on higher volume provided they agree to the, some of the consignment agreements we talked about earlier? So it's essential that you basically define the decision makers in your market and that you build a, a, a picture of what each decision maker is and how they go about making their decisions. Now this is just an overview because your industry is different. Um, maybe it's the same, maybe you see the same kind of things, but for the most part, you've got to come up with your own uh, definition of, of, of the type of criteria that the decision makers in your industry, uh, how they go about making decisions. Come up with this, with this picture for each one of them, and then you can tailor your marketing and your sales around how you go about dealing with the concerns that these decision makers have. So that's business to business decision makers. Identify those in your market. Tailor your marketing and your sales pitch towards those decision makers. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.